You've just fired up Diamond Dynasty and MLB The Show 24, and you want to know where to start. In this video, I am going to break down the fastest and most effective way to build your team and start out in MLB The Show 24, and making sure that any new player in the game is going to fully understand the modes, cards, and collections that you should go after when you start the game. Let's get into it. All right, so once you've fired up Diamond Dynasty, you'll create your team. I'm the Niagara, not a dollars. I don't spend any money in game, so if you ever match me, say hi. I want to cover the pre-order things because a lot of the players that started the game did pre-order and got all the bonuses so let's touch on that real quick once you've completed the tutorial just start ripping your packs you don't want to save them for anything because if you pull something big it can really change the trajectory of what you're going to go after if you've saved them all for a gigantic pack opening but do what you will as you can see i've got a ton from the pre-order bonuses the real highlight i got out of mine was vladdy guerrero more than likely you're gonna get just gold cards or maybe you pulled shohei who knows that's all luck when it comes to the other pre-order bonuses like the legend choice pack i'm a big proponent of choosing your favorite players, especially in MLB The Show because they do such a good job of allowing you to use your favorite cards. Ken Griffey Jr. is obviously one of the most popular players ever, but I wanted to go with someone new and a former Red Sox and Adrian Beltre, so he was who I chose. A lot of people have gone with Johan Santana, but again, this is totally up to you. Always choose your favorite players. Lastly, for the pre-door packs, the Barrier Breakers. There is a lot of strong options you can go with here. I went with Martin Diego simply because he can literally play any position and be a starting pitcher. So as you're building up your team, the advantage of choosing him is that you can literally just keep him in your lineup until you find a replacement that you want to upgrade and then you just move them to the next position until you've upgraded your entire lineup next if it didn't pop up when you first went into diamond dynasty go back to the main menu choose diamond dynasty and you will see these banners pop up describing season one and how they're going to work every new season you are going to get a free cornerstone player choice pack as well as a bunch of different show packs this is important because your cornerstone player is going to be very important especially early on so if you scroll over all the way to the last banner you will see open my season packs click on that and you will get your cornerstone player choice pack now this first selection is really not going to matter choose whoever you want because we're going to be exchanging them right away now once you've selected your cornerstone captain before you do anything with that card go all the way over to the collect tab choose collections all the way over to season collections season one scroll all the way down until you find that card now what you want to do is simply select a card and then hit start to lock in your selections. The reason why you want to do that is because you are working towards collecting these different cards on the right hand side. For example, if you collect 30 season one cards, you'll end up with the 89 Craig Biggio. Keep going, you'll get John Franco at 70 before finally you get to the season one collection choice pack at 280 cards, which will allow you to get the 99 Willie Mays, Satchel Page, or George Brett. So it is a long grind, but it is something you want to work towards. And this is an easy way to get all four of the Cornerstone Captain. So once you have locked in your first Captain card, go Go back to the collect menu, click on exchanges, click on exchange players, and then exchange season one cornerstone captains. Click on exchange items, and as you can see, you can click on Byron Buxton here, hit start, you'll exchange that card, back all the way out to the main menu, go to shop, packs, open packs, and you will see that the season one cornerstone captain choice pack is there yet again. Open the pack, choose whatever ones you don't have collected already, we'll use Kodai Senga here, back out, go to collect, collections, season collection, season one, scroll all the way down until you get back to Kodai Senga, make sure the card is selected, then hit start, lock it in, and then repeat the process. You want to do this exchange until you have all four of these cards locked in. They're essentially free cards that you could just collect. But then what I recommend you do is end with Kodai Senga. More on that in just a little bit. Once that is done, set your lineup so that you can see what you're working with. And then it's time to really get after it. Now, this next part is going to depend on your skill level. If you are very good at the game and you want to fully take advantage of your skill set, you definitely just want to hop into Battle Royale and grind out as many BR runs as you can, looking to get as many diamonds and obviously going flawless. But for the majority of the player base, and especially players that are brand new to the game, I would avoid playing online ranked, events, or BR until you've built your team. Again, total personal preference. If you don't like playing offline and you only want to play online, I totally understand that. But for the purposes of this video and helping as many of you as possible, I'd recommend staying away from it. So where I'd recommend beginning is the starter program. Head on over to programs, go to other programs, and you'll see the starter Sandy El Contra program. Click on that. And as you can see at the end of the program, by earning 50 program points, you'll end up with this 86 diamond Sandy El Contra. He's nothing crazy, but beggars can't be choosing 
teasers early on. On top of that, you'll earn headliners packs that will give you a shot at the 91 Mickey Mantle, as well as a ball and as a habit pack, which are always among the best packs in the game, and this 85 Rafael Palmero that you can put at first base or left field. It also gives you a great tutorial on how to start the game, and the order in which I would attack this is by going to moments, finishing the first two, the Palmero, as well as the Sandy Alcantara moments. Those will net you four program points. Once you've done that, head down to collections, and you want to finish all three of these collections. If you're brand new to the game, don't worry, you're not going to lose these cards. You can hit square and auto select. Once you've locked in nine, you just won't be able to sell them. So if you've ripped any sort of packs, you'll have a bunch of common players that you can then use in the live series collection later on, but you want to take advantage of this collection specifically. Once you've done that, finish off the unlockables by doing the same thing. And then finally, the bat skins, you just need one, and that will net you 15 more program points. Lastly, get a little bit more acclimated to the game and do the starter showdown. If you are brand new to showdowns, essentially how they work is there will be a list of moments that you've got to complete, and every time you complete one, you will get a better player added to your lineup, as well as a new perk, and it will also give you runs toward the final boss. So essentially, you just draft your team. In this one, I would just go for the best player available. When it comes to perks, there's only a few you really care about. Those are velocity ones. So if you don't get any of those, that's fine. But rally time is a perfect one. Exit velocity boost while losing. You're always in a losing state or tied at the very least. When it comes to showdowns, same thing with exit velocity boost in the seventh inning or later. You're always in the seventh inning or later in all of these. So you want to choose either of these every time that they are available. They do stack. So once you've set your perks, as well as created your lineup, you want to put all of your best players at the very top because you want them to get up as many times as possible if the order goes around. So just make sure you've got the best players at the top. And then it's just on to completing these showdowns. So a lot of these are gonna be very easy. The first one in the starter showdown is get on base two times in two innings. Again, very easy. And every time that you do finish one of these, you will get a final showdown run. And as you can see in the bottom left, you've just gotta get 11 runs in the final moment to beat the showdown. Now, this might take a few tries, especially if you are brand new to the game, but it's a perfect way to learn the game and there's no negatives to it. It's on a very easy difficulty mode. And once you are finished, you'll end up with 29 program points, which will again net you the Raphael Palmero, as well as some extra packs. Once you've completed the showdown, don't worry about completing the program. You're going to finish that organically because all of these missions are extremely simple to do. Again, you'll just complete them organically by playing the game. Next up, you want to go to single player modes and then conquest. If you've never played conquest, it will look a little overwhelming. I will have a video that will go over how to play conquest and the easiest way to complete it. It is very simple once you get the hang of it. But the Nation of Baseball Conquest is always a famous one at the start of the year because it is an absolute gauntlet. All of these team logos are what they call strongholds, and you've got to beat them in a three-inning game. Yeah, every single one to complete the map. Don't worry, you're not actually going to do this yet. You're just going to take advantage of all the hidden packs in this conquest map. So, thanks to Jesse D on Twitter and YouTube. Make sure you give him a follow. He always comes out with these conquest maps right when they launch, showing you where all of the hidden packs are. You can get almost all of these without playing a single game. So, once you've got the map pulled up, all you've got to do is click on your logo, and you will see you can move all of your pieces across the board. So at the start, you've got 12. And what you can do is, again, just by looking at the map, head on over until you find all of the hidden show packs. So just like that, I've gotten the first one. And then all I'm doing is working my way all the way across. And again, just trying to find all of the hidden rewards. Now a super quick tutorial of how to play Conquest. You can skip the Steel Fans phase by hitting Start. Hit Skip to Reinforce. Reinforce the furthest one by clicking X or A on it. Put all five of your resources there. Hit Start on the Move Fan phase to attack phase. And then all you want to do in this instance is move up, click on this. Any of the tiles that are not a logo, you can sim. So the more that you have, the higher the chance you have of winning. It's a lot like risk. So simulate this game. You'll win almost every time that you go if you have roughly the same amount of reinforcements. And then again here, just going up here, and getting my five show packs from the hidden tiles on the board. What I'd recommend is after a few turns that you've got a few, you can simply click start, go down to restart. This doesn't cost you anything and you'll be right back at the beginning so you can go the other direction. So for example, right off the rip, if you go down towards the bottom, there is a legend icons pack right here. Now, obviously some that are in the top right where all the Eastern teams are will require a few turns of just simulating through these. You do not have to play a single stronghold and this will net you more free packs. 
The reason why I'd recommend doing this first is because you want as many packs that you can open to work towards the Team Affinity programs. So send some time in this map, get all of the free stuff, don't worry about actually playing it, hit start, go to restart when you're all finished, and then back out to the main menu. All right, so once that is completed, it is time to attack the Team Affinity program. These are some of the most rewarding grinds that you can do in the game because they net you a ton of usable cards as well as packs and other rewards. Now in MLB The Show 24, there will be three separate Team Affinity drops. That means one player for each team, three separate times in each season, which breaks down to about once a month. So as you can see, being able to finish the Team Affinity grinds in a quick manner is always going to give you the best shot at having some of the top end cards in the game and there is a massive time saver especially early on so that's what we're going to go over here now completing the team affinity program for each division will net you essentially the same things just for different divisions early on you're going to get these packs that will give you live series cards from teams in that division as well as other various basic packs as well as ball and habit packs and then 60,000 team affinity points is where you want to focus 60,000 in each of the team affinity programs will net you your first choice pack that will give you one of the team affinity bosses this is extremely important now as you can see i finished the al west which is a fine choice I would actually recommend doing the NL East. So your main goal is to get 60,000 Team Affinity points to get your first choice pack. And then what you want to do is select Billy Wagner. He's a fine reliever early on in the game. Nothing crazy about this actual specific card when you're considering players to put in your lineup when you go online. The real advantage here is the single player missions that are all repeatable. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you will see innings pitched with NL East boss, meaning that every three innings pitched with Billy Wagner in single player diamond dynasty modes it will net you 10,000 team affinity points remember how i talked about conquest having strongholds that are three inning games yeah that means that every time that you finish a stronghold and you just leave billy wagner in there and finish the game you'll get your three innings pitched and get 10,000 team affinity points every single stronghold that you take now before we get into that we actually have to hit the 60,000 team affinity points which is a bit of a grind here is the order and how i would attack the nl east first up you want to do the NL East moments. Do all four of these. It's going to net you 12,000 team affinity points right off the rip. Once you are done those moments, you will get two of those NL East packs. And again, if you are no money spent, that's eight cards that you could potentially use in your lineup because you are going to need NL East players to really help you along the team affinity program. So remember, the goal is 60,000 team affinity points. And by far the biggest chunk that you can earn in the fastest amount of time would be by doing the team affinity East Kong Conquest map. If you head over to single player modes, go to Conquest, and then down to Team Affinity East, you have a Conquest where you have to take down all of the East Division Stronghold team. So you've got 10 Strongholds to take, and by completing all of this, you'll net yourself some extra packs, as well as a Headliner pack for completing the whole Conquest map. But the most important thing here is the 30,000 Team Affinity points that you will earn by completing this Conquest, which is a massive chunk. That's effectively half to get to 60,000. Now, along the way, especially for newer players, this is going to be a great way to learn the game, but it is also important to save as much time as possible. So if you notice, there will be single player missions that you can complete in conquest mode that will have you getting 30 total hits with NL East players that will net you 10,000 more team affinity points, a huge chunk. 20 home runs will get you 15,000 and then 30 strikeouts will net you 10,000 as well. This is the one that I would focus on. It is by far the easiest, especially if you are a brand new player. There are also some that will allow you to take off chunks of time if you are able to play on higher difficulties. If you are a new player, I would not recommend playing on All-Star just yet. If at all possible, you also want to load up with specific team players. So early on, you might not have a lot of options for the NL East, but if you can load up on specific teams, every time that you get 1500 parallel XP or XP for cards of those specific teams in the NL East, you'll get 6,000 team affinity points. Pitchers are usually going to give you your biggest bump here. The last thing I want to touch on before we get into Conquest is these player exchanges. Unless you are stupid rich and have just dropped a ton of money in the game, never do these exchanges. When you exchange these players, they are gone from your collection. It's not like the cornerstone captains where you would collect the 
the card and then still have it. These are literally gone, so do not do them. So the easiest way to tackle this is go to Manage Squad, go all the way up to the top and you will see your main team. Click on that and you can create a new lineup. So for example, you can create a new squad, name it NL East. And then what you can do is go through your lineup and just put players that are from the NL East in your lineup. For example, like Brandon Marsh. Now, remember how I said Kodai Senga would be the cornerstone captain I would recommend first? Well, that's because it'll give yourself a very good pitcher that you can just blow through all of the conquest strongholds with, making it very easy. Again, you don't need to do this. You can go with Sandy Alcantara once you unlock him from the starter program, or really any silver or bronze card. It's not going to be very difficult, but just something to keep in mind. Now, once you have hit 60,000, again, remember to choose Billy Wagner, and then this is going to be very, very easy. Once you have done the NL East, it's time to attack the AL West. This is going to work the exact same way that you just did the NL East. Again, the goal is to get to 60,000 Team Affinity points so that you can select either Rizal Iglesias, who is a closer, or Jose the Clerk. And once you collect them, the single player missions at the bottom, you will see three innings pitched with either Iglesias or the Clerk in a single player Diamond Dynasty game mode. So Conquest. And every time you do so, that's 10,000 more Team Affinity points. Both of these Conquests in total took about five hours, and I was able to complete the entire AL West and the NL East getting Billy Wagner. Again, I'd recommend the exact same sequence. Finish all of the moments, rip the base packs that you get for that division to help put more cards in your lineup, set your lineup so that you've got only cards from that division, and then move on to the Team Affinity West Conquest quest map. This is rinse and repeat. Make sure that while you're doing the West Conquest map, you're only using Billy Wagner as your pitcher. That way you are completing the team affinity points very easily for the NL East. Once you have done that, move on to the AL West by using Leclerc or Rizal Iglesias. After completing the Team Affinity program for the AL West, as well as the NL East getting to 60,000, getting Billy Wagner. Again, you want to do that in reverse. This is the lineup I was able to build. Obviously, I got a huge pull in Ronald Acuna, and pack luck is going to vary for everyone, but I haven't spent a single stub, and all I did was open up the free packs that I had available to me. Unless you were trying to build a specific team build with cards from your favorite team, for example, which I totally recommend doing, I wouldn't spend any stubs. Play it very safe. Obviously, working the market and flipping and everything like that is extremely lucrative, but I'm all about just trying to get everyone to learn the game as, and make it as easy as possible. Now, while you're completing the Team Affinity program, you're also working towards the Spring Breakout program as well, and this is going to reward you with some of the best Spring Breakout players, some of the best prospects in the game, including this James Wood, and highlighted by the 89 Dylan Cruz. Now, you can speed things up by doing all of the moments. Again, you will get 12 points here. I would avoid the extreme moment unless you are a pretty good player. This one's on Hall of Fame. I think it's just more advantageous to finish the AL West or the NL East and at least get one of the relievers at 60,000 before you finish out the spring breakout set. I just think it's a faster way to get things done, but you can do the spring breakout showdown. That would get you 15. Again, it operates exactly like the starter one does. And then you can throw these cards in your lineup while you're completing the various conquest maps as well like Harry Ford, for example. This is definitely something you should tackle, and if you are someone who is not grinding a ton and you are just looking to play online, I would definitely start with the Spring Breakout program because you can get a ton of decent cards, and they will work towards the Team Affinity grind, but they're kind of all over the place. You'd have to finish the program to get the AL East players, so that's why I just don't put a big focus on it. Once you are done, the NL East and the AL West, it gets a little bit more difficult, so having someone when you're trying to do the Central, like Jacob Mizorowski, obviously having a top-end pitcher makes things much easier. Now, once you've gotten off to a good start by completing a lot of the Team Affinity program, what I'd recommend is to start taking on events. Events is the easiest way to learn the game in terms of an online perspective. It's very fast, it's three inning games, and you're not losing any stubs like the entry fee to Battle Royale. It is completely accumulative when it comes to the wins. So at 10 wins, you'll be able to get this 85 Grayson Rodriguez. And at 20 wins, you'll get this 90 2018 standout Anthony Rendon. Again, I wouldn't worry about this until you've built up your lineup a little bit to give yourself the biggest advantage. You know your skill level, so you'd be the judge of that. When it comes to Battle Royale and Ranked, I would continue building up your team before I would take on Ranked. Again, just to make it easier on yourself, especially if you're no money spent. Now, once you have gotten the AL West and the NL East done, at least to the 60k mark, the other four are going to be 
a little bit more difficult, but the AL East specifically has only hitters. Remember, I mentioned that pitchers make it a lot easier because they pitch three innings every showdown. You can get a ton of strikeouts with them. It makes it go by a lot quicker. Obviously, with a hitter, they get up once every time to the order, and if you don't perform well with them, it just takes a lot longer. So what I'd recommend doing for the AL East is, again, completing that East Conquest that you've done when doing the NL East. That gives you a big chunk. But I would actually recommend going into and doing the Derek Jeter storyline. Again, you can avoid this. This is not necessary at all. But even as a Red Sox fan, it was incredibly well done. And it took me about an hour and a half, and I watched all of the cutscenes to get everything done from the program so far in the Derek Jeter storyline. And the biggest advantage here is once you are completely done the Derek Jeter storyline, you'll end up with his 85 captain card, Jorge Posada, which is one of the best catcher swings in the game. You'll get Chili Davis, Paul O'Neill, as well as Andy Pettit and Mariano Rivera. So again, using all of those cards in your lineup, you're going to be able to complete the parallel XP required for Yankees just much quicker. Gives you a much bigger head start. And honestly, it was really fun and well done. Not necessary, but like I said, even as a Red Sox fan, I'd recommend doing it. All right, lastly, let's talk about the Live Series collection. Essentially, you've got to collect every single player on every single team, and it will net you with specific team rewards, like completing and collecting the entire New York Yankees. You'll get the 90 Bernie Williams, collect all of the AL, and you'll end up with the 95 Rafael Palmero. Collect the entire NL, and you'll get this awesome 95 Pedro Martinez. Collect everything, and you get the 99 Babe Ruth, which is a unreal card because he's a starting pitcher and a incredible batter. Obviously, if you're no money spent, this is going to take a long time. Here's what I'd recommend. Once you've opened all your free packs from the Conquest, you are going to pull something of worth. Doesn't matter what it is, you will probably pull a decent diamond, at least one or two of them. For example, I was lucky enough to pull Ron of the Cunha. I would slowly lock these in. Again, if you have the purpose of completing the Live Series collection like I do, there's no reason in selling them if you haven't gotten them collected. So you can go through and collect all these cards. I am going to try and complete the Live Series collection, and I'm going to do it, and I'm not going to spend any money in it. Now, if you get lucky and you pull some cards that are specific to that season, like this Michael Young, I was able to pull out of a headliner pack, you probably want to go ahead and sell them. They're only going to be able to be used in season one, or you could put them in the wild card spot, but more than likely, they're going to drop in value quite a bit. I would go ahead and get rid of them and sell them. And again, all the subs you make from these cards that are not a part of the live series collection, I would then throw back into cards that are a part of that collection. When it comes to what teams to go after first, First, obviously the teams that are not as good, you can collect them for very cheap. Like the Oakland Athletics, for example, can get you the 84 Mark McGuire and all these cards are not going to be all that expensive. What I recommend doing is waiting to see what cards you pull that are expensive. So for example, pulling Ronald Acuna, that takes about 180 to 200,000 stubs off of my cost to completing the collection. So I'm going to focus on the National League simply because I pulled that so I have a bit of a head start. You want to focus on one league and I would go one team at a time. Now, there is a lot more to cover in-game. Haven't even touched online yet, but this should get your team off and running in MLB The Show 24. And be sure to tune in live to my Twitch streams every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern time, twitch.tv slash nosleeves12. If I'm not live while you're watching this video, just give me a follow. You'll get that notification when I do go live. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned to the channel for more MLB content all the way throughout the year. I'll see you next time.